Welcome to tonight's Common Council meeting. Before we start our council uh, meeting, we ask City Clerk Sue Richards to read the quote of the week. Thank you, Mayor. Resolve to make at least one person happy every day, and in 10 years, you may have made 3,000 people happy or brighten the equivalent of a small town by your contribution to the fund of general enjoyment. Thank you, and <laughs> Sue, Sue is halfway there. Yeah, right? <laughs> wow. Call the 19th regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Please call the roll. Boren? Here. Bauk? Here. Decker? Here. Gisha? Here. Hannah? Here. Heidemann? Here. Kittleson? Here. Kleunis? Here. Meyer? Here. Montemayor? Here. Rinfleisch? Here. Ryan? Here. Zurich? Here. Vanderweel? Here. Verhasselt? Here. And Wangaman? Excuse. 15 present. Quorum is present. At this time, I'd ask everyone rise to uh, cite the Pledge of Allegiance. Alderman Bauk, would you please lead us? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Bow. Approval of the minutes, President Hannah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Motion and second to approve minutes under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Minutes stand approved. Next item is resignations. Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the mayor received an email from Grace Starnella advising that uh, she needs to resign from the mayor's international committee. That's for motion to uh, accept the resignation. President Hill. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd make a motion to accept Grace's resignation. Second. Motion and second to accept resignation under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? <clears throat> motion carries. Public forum. Madam City Clerk. Thank you. First this evening would be Henry Capitillo. And Henry, can you get the mic a little bit closer to where you will be? And then I just need your home address, please. Sure. Whoops. <laughs> there. I fixed it, then there's no charge. That's right. <laughs> That'd be great. And your home address, Henry? That's uh, 1619 North 38th Street. And that's in the town of Sheboygan. Okay, and you will have five minutes. Okay. How many, oh, wrong page here, already. Thank you for the opportunity to come before this council to speak on a very important issue, the city of Sheboygan's primary and spring election. I come to speak to the voters of the city of Sheboygan who I know watch these council meetings. If there, are any other, if there was any other forum which I could address the voters of Sheboygan, I would gladly do so, but I, I will get that to that issue at a later date. As you know, there are quite a few individuals that are seeking the office of mayor and some aldermanic seats that are be, being contested. I plead with the voters of Sheboygan to seriously look at each person that is seeking public office in this election cycle and determine if they are truly worthy of your vote. You may ask, what should we be considering expecting of these candidates? My response to you is the following. Keeping property taxes is not the only important issue. It does not matter how low your taxes are if you cannot afford to pay them because you lose your job. And the, 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 the new job that you have only pays minimum wage. I believe that one of the main issues in this election should be job creation, job expansion, and maintaining existing jobs in the community. And I mean good paying jobs, not just jobs like waiters, waitresses, hotel cleaning jobs, and other low paying jobs that have been created by this administration. I ask you to look at the jobs that have been lost over the last year. 350 jobs at Pentair, 10 to 15 at Zerheides, 50 to 60 at Polarware. And one thing that all of these places have in common is that the present administration did not have a clue that these companies were going to leave or were closing down. What does this say about this administration? That they are out of touch with some of the business community in the city of Sheboygan. 
How can you expect to keep good paying jobs in the city if you are not able to keep in touch with the manufacturing businesses in the community? It is my understanding that State Assemblyman Terry Van Akron was instrumental in setting up a meeting with the Pentair management with city and Sheboygan County officials to see if they would reconsider leaving the city. Look at the candidates who are presently holding office and see what their track record is in working to create good paying jobs. Ask new candidates what they, what they have that have not held public office, how they plan to create or attract good paying jobs to the city of Sheboygan. How many times have you heard the administration of how important it is to develop the South Pier District in Blue Harbor? Their emphasis has always been on developing tourism jobs, which have traditionally paid lower wages and are sometimes seasonal employment. Individuals cannot raise a family on low wages and seasonal employment. They need full-time and good-paying jobs. Look at the candidates who presently hold office and see how they have voted in their committees as to job creation, job expansion, and maintaining existing jobs in the community. For candidates who presently hold office, look at what these candidates are pr proposing to do and how it reflects on promises that they have made in the past. Are they credible, truthful, or believable? Look close to their past record. Do they follow through on what they say they plan to do, or is it just political grandstanding? Consider the following phrases like, actions speak louder than words, lead by example, idle promises mean nothing, a person's word is his bond, Seeing is believing. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. A bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. What do all these phrases have in common? Value of commitment, truthfulness, and believability. How many times have you heard people say, well, all politicians make promises that they cannot keep? My response to that is then, you should hold them accountable at the ballot box for their failure to follow through on their campaign promises. Politicians will continue to make idle promises if you are not willing to hold them accountable. It is, it is time to hold our elected officials accountable and demand that they look out for the best interest of the city of Sheboygan and the taxpayers. One thing that the city has in common with the state of Wisconsin and the U.S. government is that it is struggling to get its financial house in order. The federal government is looking to spend trillions of dollars to stimulate the economy. The state of Wisconsin is looking to the federal government to help bail out its financial shortfalls. The residents of Sheboygan look to their elected officials to have reassurance that they are doing everything within their power to keep good paying jobs and attract good jobs to the city of Sheboygan and Sheboygan County. Not long ago, I remember hearing the city assessor in these chambers call for the city to look at what the city of Manitowoc has done to attract good paying jobs in their community and the city should look at their economic endeavors and accomplishment. In closing, I would say again, I think it's important for Excuse all, me, Henry, would you like your additional minute? Yes. I think it's important for the people that are in this community to see what's happening in other parts of this country where people are losing their jobs, are losing their homes, can't make their mortgages. I know that I just read an article not too long ago from uh, the uh, uh, Ken King, which said that there's an increase on mortgage uh, late payments and also foreclosures even in the, in the city of Sheboygan. So my, my request for the, the individuals that are out there is seriously look at what the candidates are proposing and see what their track record is. See if it's believable, see if it's doable, and again, hold them responsible at the ballot box. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you. And last on our list is Joanne Scribner. Joanne, if you could please come up to the front. And I will need your address, please. Three Seneca Trail, Sheboygan. Three Seneca? Yes. Okay, and you will have five minutes. Thank you. First of all, I'd like to wish all of you a very Merry Christmas, belatedly, either last year or very early for 09, and a very happy new year of 2009. Um, I was gonna play this CD for you tonight, but that hasn't probably been done at Common Council before, so. But if I would, I would have played number five, I Listened to the Bells, 
by Luther Van Dross and Darlene Love. Listen to the bells. So of course I brought some of my bells along with me from my bell collection, and you will see how this relates to Sheboygan, trust me. Okay. Um, okay, bells, Sheboygan, church bells, come to church, hymns and carols, Christmas carols, played on church bells, like Trinity Lutheran Church. You've probably heard the church Christmas carols from Trinity Lutheran. Fountain Park Church, uh, ring church bells, come to church services. Merlin Rush rings the bells every single time, I think, for church services. Service Ice Guy, Merlin Rush, been around forever. Um, bell Choir, Fountain Park Church, Eileen Bailey, so much fun. In fact, I skipped out of rehearsal tonight to be here, but I told her, <laughs> so we're okay. Um, bells at school, get to class. Um, Hey, school's out, yay. 3.30, 2.30. Um, bells at Heritage Mutual Insurance Company. We're talking the old heritage back on North 23rd and Kohler Memorial Drive. I used to work there. Bells for break, yay. Back to work, oh, not so much fun. Bells. They don't have bells anymore at Acuity. <laughs> I think they're thankful. No more bells. I guess they even have a, a, an, a heritage day at Acuity now where they like dress up in old clothes of the 70s or something, or maybe the 60s, whenever, you know, old, imagine. Heritage Day, I found this out from one of my sources that, you know, um, actually my friend worked there also at um, Heritage at one point too. So, prangies, remember the old HC prangy? I think they had bells there, ding, ding, ding. I think this is correct, now don't quote me, I may, my memory may not be quite right there. And as I said, I do have a collection of bells. Uh, Door County Bell, flowered, okay. Um, white porcelain bell, two crystal praying hands bells, uh, two Wyoming bells, three South Dakota bells, one Nebraska bell, one Montana bell, one more Door County bell, one Wisconsin Al Capone hideout bell. <laughs> yes. Um, one Kentucky bell, that's also in here. Um, two Minnesota bells, they're both in here. One Dutch lady bell, I didn't bring that, that's breakable. Um, one Chicago bell, one bell from a lady who used to live in Chicago, it worked here. Um, I left that home too, also breakable. One Ocean City, Maryland bell, one 50th wedding anniversary bell from Morris and Ella Johnson, my parents, married July 1st, 1944. Uh, one beautiful white porcelain bell, flowered. Gary and Joanne Scribner, 25th anniversary, October 6th, 1979. Um, I used to have a brass bell from, that I got at Abu Dhabi or Dubai or Amman, Jordan, one of those places. You know what happened to that thing? I was at the Greyhound bus depot in Tallahassee one time. Um, it was sitting, sitting in the seat next to me. Some guy whoosh, ran right past there, took my purse with the bell and my bus ticket. Um, the whole purse is gone, my bell. But I do have this still. That is from you know one of those places, either Jordan or Abu Dhabi. So we're okay. Um, and then I had an old-fashioned school bell, also brass with a red bow on it. And of course, I like school schools. Um, got that from a sweet old lady that used to live on North 25th Street. 24 bells total, minus the one stolen in Tallahassee, but not a problem. I did find this brass bell, back to 24 bells. So, <laughs> what do bells have to do with Sheboygan? Just two points this time. One, the church bells, you know, come to church services, bells played at weddings, at funerals. You know, unfortunately, you know, divorce and adultery and death and even murder, you know, can happen because of the unfaithfulness. And as, as you probably read the press on January 3rd and saw the recent terrible tragedy here in Sheboygan. It's not an easy thing, you know, death, um, murder, uh, awful. Sad for all, I just feel sad for everybody involved. And yes, we miss those loved ones, especially at Christmas time, you know, about the blue Christmas. I had one of those this year. Uh, but even in these death issues, our Sheboygan Police Force, the Sheboygan Fire Department. Excuse me, the, Joanne, would you like your extra minute? Yes, please. Okay, go ahead. The Sheboygan Fire Department ambulances, the Orange Cross ambulances, they are doing their job and they are doing it well. Um, and speaking of the Sheboygan Police Department, thank you very much Police Chief David Kirk 
for all of your years of service here in Sheboygan, and to you and your wife, enjoy that well-earned retirement. And congratulations also to the new interim chief of police, Lieutenant, Lieutenant Tim Eyrick, and hats off to all of you police officers and firefighters that may have gotten promotions in 2008. I know of one friend of mine who said he got a promotion. I think, great, way to go. Number two, school bells. I have not taught or been an educational assistant in the Sheboygan Area School District for about four years now, but I will be back very shortly. So I'm not personally aware of the courses currently being taught. This may really be a Sheboygan School Board issue, so I'm sorry, maybe I should not be bringing this up here. But my question is, why can the public schools, um, even nationwide, promote the religion of humanism and not the religion of Christianity? Excuse me, Joanne. Done? Yeah. OK. That is my question. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's it for this evening. Thank you very much. Thank you to those who addressed the council tonight. Next item on the agenda is a mayor's comments. I've got some comments on, on our snow removal efforts. Uh, here and there I get calls from the public uh, with concerns about our snow removal efforts to why a certain street wasn't plowed uh, adequately or why the streets are getting narrower or why the streets haven't been salted or why the streets are being cleaned late or not early enough and so forth. So I just wanted to give the council and the public uh, uh, a brief uh, description of what the, the work that we've done to date. Uh, we've only had snow uh, uh, from November 24th to December 30th, but in that during that time we have responded to 13 snowfall events. Now by snowfall events, that's when the snow actually falls, it compels us to go out and do something about that. So if you look at 13 snowfall events in the last month and a couple of days, that's almost one snowfall every other day, every other day and a half. So that's a lot of snow. Uh, we are being pounded by Mother Nature again, just like we did last year. And uh, there's no indication that uh, Mother Nature is going to let up on us in the next couple of months or three months. Two of those events have resulted in snow emergency being declared, uh, and that's within the, the last 30 days. So when the snow emergency is declared, people need to react and move their cars. We have received approximately uh, 55 inches of snow to date. Folks, that's a lot of snow. Uh, it's really a lot of snow. We're way ahead of last year's uh, pace at this time, the snow we had had by this time last year. And when you look at 55 inches of snow to date, it's a lot of snow and a lot of accumulation. So that in itself, the accumulation presents a lot of, a lot of issues uh, for the uh, Public Works Department. During snowfall events, the DPW, uh, Department of Public Works, deploys various pieces of equipment and they make multiple passes on emergency routes and any other streets, hills, and difficult areas to get to. Uh, the equipment is deployed. There's a very sound um, schedule to do that, a uh, very accountable schedule, very responsive schedule, but we do what we can with the equipment that we can and the people that we have. The Department of Public Works has made about 23 rounds to date, and by that is cleaning the, the entire areas. Uh, 23 rounds of 200 centerline miles of street. 23 rounds of 200 miles of centerline street. And that equates to about 4,600 miles of centerline uh, miles or 9,200 miles of curb line for this snow season today. That is a lot of area to cover with the people that we have and the equipment that we have. We have used about 2,400 tons of salt that we have which is about half of the salt that we actually contracted for, for the entire year. We contracted for 4,800 tons, and we've used about half. Uh, and we still have January, February, March, and a little bit of April here and there to, to deal with. So as of now, I can tell you we're pretty short in snow for what we anticipate to, uh, to fall. Currently, we do pay $45 a ton, or we have paid $45 a ton for the contract snow that, or the contract salt that we, that we have. When that is gone, if we have to go out of the normal process, which we'll have to do because we don't have a contract anymore, we will probably be looking at paying $150 a ton. So it almost, it does triple, a little over triple the, the cost. And that's just the way it is. Not unique to Sheboygan. A lot of municipalities in the state of Wisconsin and other states that have heavy snowfall are going to be doing the same thing. So that's where we're up again. Uh, 
In, mid -de in mid mid December, we started using uh, salt sparingly because of that. We've used half of our, our stock already, so we're, we are already using it sparingly, uh, and that's at discretion of the Department of Public Works director and uh, the crew. This year again, I will ask the council uh, to fund an adequate salt shed. Uh, I don't know where that's going to go, but I believe that having an adequate salt shed will allow us to have the, the necessary salt for the number of months that we have salt, just so we can contract it, buy it at the $45 a ton instead of $150 a ton, and be able to store it and stock it for days of, of emergency. This week, we started widening uh, certain narrow streets and parking impacted areas. We did that uh, because people have been calling. Uh, Bill Bittner, Director of Public Works, had already been working on a plan to do that. And I, I do wish to announce to the public that those areas are being widened now to the, uh, to the extent we possibly can. There, a lot of the snow is, is frozen right now, so we're having to deal with that issue itself. All in all, I'm asking for your help. I would ask that you help us by, first of all, being patient with our snow cleaning efforts. We're not ignoring the situation. We're not neglecting our responsibility. We're being as extremely responsive as we possibly can in dealing with the situation. We have very committed people at the Department of Public Works that really care and know what they're doing and go out about and do it, but it's hard to keep up with the snowfall. I also ask that people move their cars when they're supposed to. We get a lot of uh, complaints of people not moving their cars. Subsequently, the snow plows have to go around, and if they go around, pretty much every single time they're going to bury that car. And in addition to having that car buried, they're going to get a ticket. And they're going to get a ticket because we need the public to comply with our ordinances so we can clean the streets, not because we need any money. I'd rather not have the money, and then that's not the issue. The issue is to move the cars so we can adequately clean the streets. I would also ask that the people help by cleaning around the fire hydrants when they're able to. Uh, we haven't had a, re a real bad fire during the winter months, uh, during the winter time yet, but if we were to have one, we certainly would like to have those fire hydrants cleaned. And in the past, the fire department has sent out crews to clean, but there's too many of them. So we ask the public to help us when they're able to. Also, I would ask that uh, the public uh, do their share to clean their sidewalks and driveways. I get calls from people who say my neighbor or a person, a resident a block away has not cleaned their sidewalks. I almost fell. I can't walk through it. I have to walk in the streets. So I ask that the public help us out by cleaning uh, their sidewalks and their driveways when, uh, as soon as they possibly can. And then, of course, I also ask for your help in driving more carefully uh, when it's snowing and when there's a snow emergency out there. And if you really don't need to go somewhere, stay home. I get a lot of uh, concern from the Department of Public Works and the police and fire departments that, that, that ask us, if you don't need to go somewhere during a snow emergency, it's best that you stay home. It helps us clean our streets better, helps police be more responsive and fire department be more responsive, and it keeps the citizens out of harm's way also. And then, of course, uh, I would ask that uh, help you help us by understanding that this is Wisconsin, and we get lots of snow, and we just have to deal with that. And finally, if the public has any concerns, uh, I'd ask that they uh, call the Department of Public Works and express their concerns there. If they get no results, and they should call the, uh, an alderman or, or the mayor's office. And I would like to thank the Department of Public Works, Bill Bidner, for the hard work, uh, for his crew, for the hard work that they're doing to date. We uh, anticipate a lot more snow, Bill, and I know you'll be on top of that. I appreciate that. Also, thanks to the fire department who are ready to go whenever necessary. Thank God they haven't been deployed yet. And of course, to the uh, police department uh, for the work that they've done. Uh, and speaking of the police department, uh, I'd like to extend my congratulations to uh, Interim Chief Tim Eirich and uh, congratulate him and, and introduce uh, Interim Chief Eirich to the public and to the, I believe the council already knows, but I'd like to ask him to come up here real quickly, Chief, if you would. Chief Eirich was chosen from a slate of four candidates by the Police and Fire Commission, and uh, there was uh, no shortage of good qualified candidates. Unfortunately, only one could be selected. Chief Eirich was selected, and he is a man. I'll, I'll turn the uh, mic on for his sake. I guess I didn't expect to speak, so I'll make it very brief, <laughs> Mayor. Um, I just want to extend my uh, sincere appreciation for all the support, Mayor, from you. Common Council members uh, for this interim position. 
Um, I look forward to the challenges that we have upcoming. We've lost a lot of our command staff, um, but I think with challenges also becomes um, some ideas where new ideas can be implemented within our department. Um, and I also look forward to working with each and all of you to uh, enhance our department uh, over the next year. So, and again, I'd like to extend an open door if you have any questions, um, anything you need to know about the police department or need to know or question about us, please call or please stop in. We have a nice new facility. Um, hopefully you all made it there. And if you haven't, I'd be more than happy to take you through it and show it because we're extremely proud of it. And again, thank you very much. And I look forward to uh, working with you in 2009. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. And on that good note, I will stop talking and we will proceed. Consent agenda, President Hannah. I have 19.1 through 19.6. Right, I'd like to pull forward 19.6 before I go on with the consent if I might. Please do, you gonna make a motion? Uh, that would be, I'll make a motion, well, I'll make a motion to <clears throat> uh, put the RO be accepted and placed on file. Uh, to accept and adopt the report. Yeah, I'm committee. sorry, yep. accept and adopt the report of committee. Okay. Second. There's a motion and a second. And that uh, is being pulled out for a separate vote, Alderman. After that, we'll take a vote on the remaining five items in the consent agenda. Any discussion on the 19-6? Uh, mm -hmm. There'll be a non plus call rule. Warren? Aye. Falk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Abstain. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Kleinis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Rinfleisch, Ryan, Aye. Surik, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. and Verhasselt. 14 ayes, one abstention. Motion carries. 1916, uh, again through 196, with the exception of, of six, up for vote. Any discussion on those remaining items? Oh, I need a motion. To yes. I make a motion for all ROs uh, be accepted and placed on file, and all RCs be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is no discussion. Please call the roll. Falk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Kleunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. For Hasselt? Aye. And Boren? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions, 197, to be referred. Report of officers, two. Bless you. 19.8 through 19.16 to be referred. Resolutions introduced three, 19.17 by Alderman Ryan, approving the terms and conditions of the contract of sale of land for private redevelopment by the by and between the Redevelopment Authority and the Javi Com Companies LLC for the former Kingsbury property. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move for suspension of the rules. Is there, is there a second? Is there any objection? Is there an objection or an explanation? <laughs> Pardon me? Just like an explanation for it. Okay. There is no objection, so please proceed. Okay. Uh, explanation, uh, Your Honor. Um, we have in the works a $250,000 uh, Department of Commerce Brownfields grant for this particular property um, that will not be issued until the developer's agreement is complete. And uh, this is a time-sensitive manner, and therefore this is why we are, are moving to suspend the rules this evening. Yeah, I just need a motion to uh, put the resolution upon its passage. And I do motion to put the resolution upon its passage. Okay. Motion and second. Any further discussion on that? <clears throat> are you done? Are we on the suspension or on the passage? On the step? passing. On the, on the passage. Uh, this is a... Uh, <clears throat> This is, uh, the Hovey Companies is going to develop this property. It's, it's great for the city of Sheboygan. Uh, minimum investment of $5.7 million on this property. Um, it will be two and three bedroom apartments, which will be uh, some market rate, some affordable rate, um, and a $300,000 uh, price tag on the property itself. So it's, uh, it's a, uh, a good move uh, to uh, expand the tax base in the city. Thank you. Thank you. Alma Clayunas. Thank you, Your Honor. The question was answered. I just wanted to know what kind of construction was going to be on the property. Thank you. And uh, any other discussion? I would like to extend my thanks to Paulette Anders and Chad. They've done an incredible amount of work here. Uh, 
This, is, as was noted, will expand the tax base. This is probably one of the few leftover pieces of land of this size in the city, and it's going to be put to good use uh, as far as uh, um, development and as far as expanding the tax base. So, Palad, Chad, thank you very much. There is no more discussion. Please call the roll. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel, aye. Rehassel, aye. Boren, aye. and Bulk. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1918 lies over. 1919 through 1923 to be referred. Report of Committee 6, 1924 by Finance, recommending filing documents, submitting a communication from the Town of Wilson requesting that the city pay $22,900 for the partial paving of Panther Avenue that was inadvertently done by the town based on the Department of Transportation certifying the miles wrong and approving the payment. Alderman Gish. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second under discussion. Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> I'm going to vote no on this tonight, as I did in the Finance Committee. I had a couple calls from constituents about this issue. And while the city did benefit from this paving on Panther Avenue over in my district, uh, and I want to keep good relations with the town of Wilson, the uh, Department of Transportation made an error in the map that they provided to the town of Wilson. And therefore, it, they went ahead and actually paved in the city of Sheboygan. I wish the uh, town of Wilson would check with the uh, Department of Transportation first, uh, seeing they made the error and have the, st the, the state of Wisconsin Department of Transportation pay the $22,900 instead of the city of Sheboygan. And for that reason, I'm not going to support this. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? There is none. Please call the roll. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? No. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. I'm sorry. Aye. Thank you. Ryan? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhassel? No. Boren? No. Bauk? No. And Decker? Aye. 11 eyes, 4 noes. Motion carries. 1925 by law and licensing. Recommending the Nyan Beverage Operator's License Number 8110 based on the applicant's ineligibility to hold a license. Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Motion and second. Under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, is B.D. Johnson here tonight? She's not here, Your Honor. Thank you. Please proceed. Uh, Ms. Johnson uh, was convicted of a felony for manufacture and uh, delivery of drugs. And that felony makes her ineligible for the license. So that's why we decided not to grant it. Very well, thank you. Any other discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk, Aye. Decker, Aye. and Gisha. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Report of Officers 8, 1926, by Committee of the Whole, recommending creating a temporary government structure committee as to the economic and administrative feasibility of having a city manager or city administrator versus a full-time mayor and a corporate council versus a city attorney and passing the attached substitute resolution. Alderman Bauk. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd move that the... Uh, the report be accepted and adopted and the substitute resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I would just uh, explain. Uh, the Committee of the Whole had a good discussion about uh, this process and the, the only change we made to the resolution was to accelerate the process so this do no later. The first recommendation be do no later than March 16th uh, so that this can, uh, the first uh, weigh-in can be done before the current uh, election is held so that the candidates, some of the candidates will be held to weigh in on their opinion of some of these things. Uh, they'll have some time to do that. And then uh, seeing how 
the committee didn't feel that the office of the mayor should have to be responsible for appointing members to a committee that would be looking into the office of the mayor, uh, the role of the mayor. So um, the committee thought it was important to help uh, help that process out and appoint some. Uh, and again, there's some great members on there, all city uh, city people, but people who have uh, an outreach to the uh, board of education, the board of uh, the county board, and then some private citizens. So that that about wraps it up. Okay. There is no more discussion. Please call the roll. Heidemann. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Cleunas. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Zurich. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Verhassel. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. And Hannah. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Matters laid over 11, 1836, resolution number 175809 by Alderman Gisha, Cleunas, Boren, Bauk, and Montemayor authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2008 budget, establishing revenue and appropriation for contribution received by the Senior Center from the Friends of S Senior Center for printing expenses and appropriation for Mead Library operating expenses approved by the Library Board. Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call roll. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. And Heidemann? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1837, RC number 3560809 by the Group Health Insurance Committee recommending authorizing engaging the services of an independent auditing firm to review the city's medical benefit plan claims experience for the years 2006, 7, and 8. Alderman Sark. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I move that the report of committees be accepted and adopted and the resolution be put upon this passage. Motion and second under discussion. Who did, who did the second? I'm sorry. Who, who second? I didn't hear a second. Nobody second? Is there a second to that motion? I'll second. Motion second under discussion. Uh, Alderman Montemayor. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. We had two insurance committee uh, meetings, and these questions were thoroughly and completely answered by Terry Hansen, so I do not support spending more money on this. Thank you. President Hanna? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I believe in the regular course of our standard audit, uh, the current auditing for firm at the direction of Terry Hansen can gather this information and include it in the ordinary audit. There's no need to have a separate audit or a separate firm brought in. Uh, and in the management letter, they can express their opinion on the comparability over those three years. Do so I won't support this because I believe it can be done by our regular auditing firm. You want to make a motion to file then? I would make a motion to file. Is there a second? Second. Under discussion on the motion to file. I've got lights blinking right now. Anybody on the motion to file? Alderman uh, Rinfleisch, you're over next. Uh, I can no, Word, I think we have a motion that we need to act on right now. The motion to accept uh, and it was seconded. So do we right. need to vote on that one first before we go on to the motion to file or does the motion to file overrule everything else? Motion to file is always takes precedence. Overrule. It takes precedence, yes. Um, no, that my comment would be a second additional motion. Okay, on the motion to file, no one. Okay, I'm going to turn off the lights if there is any discussion. On the motion to file, please call the roll. Oh, who, who would like to speak? Alderman Kittleson, on the motion yes, to file. Thank you, Your Honor. No, I, I just, I want clarification on this. Um, we're going to file this communication because the audit has already, or just explain again, please. Yeah. Please. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, this year, the, I think the auditing firm of Shank & Associates, uh, the Green Bay office does the audit. Uh, Terry Hansen will request that they meet these standards in their, in their ordinary course of doing the audit. So we don't have to create another audit function. Or expense. Or expense. Thank you. <laughs> Alma Kittleson, you want like? Thank you. Thank okay. you. I uh, Alma Sart. Yeah, just for clarification, I, I, I expect the move, the motion being there to uh, have an audit under the resolution as stated, but have it done by Shank. Is that correct? No, the motion is to file. File with a direction to Terry Hansen. <clears throat> okay. 
Alderman Rehessel. Thank you, Honor. Seeing cost as a concern, is there an idea of what that cost might be if we did hire an independent okay. auditor? We have an idea from experience, past history. Have we done this before? Do we know what cost we're avoiding? No, I don't have any cost, but whatever it costs, it's certainly going to be needless because we have an a auditing firm that does this for us. The right, reason I ask, I'm sorry, the follow up, I guess, if this is successful, I'm sure this person could pay for themselves or this firm could pay for themselves four times over, uh, depending on how, what the results are. You know, the whole idea behind this is to recommend reductions in cost and so on. So I'm all right spending the money as long as there's that potential for our upside, which I think there probably is. So I'm just curious what that cost might be up front. President Hanna was going to address you. Sure. I think, Mr. Mayor, I think that uh, Schenken Associates will achieve exactly what all the person for Hasselt is attempting to achieve under our, our existing contract with them. I understand what he's trying to accomplish, but they're held to an accounting standard, uh, so they will certainly do the job within those standards. Thank you. Alderman um, Gisha? No, sorry. Thank, Thank you. you. There's no more discussion. Please call a roll on the motion to file. Clayunas? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. For Hassel? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. I'm sorry. Aye. Thank you. Kittleson? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. There is an item on the agenda, not a uh, number, notice of intent to discharge a group health insurance committee. <coughs> President Hanna, in a motion. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd make a motion to discharge the Group Health Insurance Committee regarding the following documents. 1741, which is Resolution 169-0809, and 1642, which is Resolution 154-0809. Would you okay. like an explanation? That's fine. Is there a motion and second? Motion second, under discussion. Holman Rain, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I guess I would like some... Um, discussion or explanation on, since we're into 2009 now, we're establishing plans. Have these been established already you know, within committee? Or if we recall them and we either approve them or deny them, what's the status of that? It seems odd that we're pulling them back from a group health committee without a recommendation from group health committee on what to do in this aspect. Okay. Alderman Gisha, you have a response to that? Sure. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, these documents were in finance, where they're normally voted on for the insurance, establishing the insurance rates. And um, at the same time they were in finance, group health kind of fired itself back up after being relatively dormant for a relatively long period of time. So we f um, referred them for their review. But as far as the vetting of the, of the numbers and the presentation of, uh, of the rates and so forth, that was done in finance. Uh, we just uh, decided to step back and let group health take a look at it and uh, uh, at that time. So the, the presentation was made on the information if that was the main question. Alderman Hanna? Yes, and I, I thank you, Mr. Mayor. And group health has met twice on these items, and I just thought it was appropriate for it to bring it back now for the council to vote. Thank you. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. There's a little bit of history. Uh, a couple of council meetings ago, we were going to address these two, uh, these agenda items, but they were um, sent both to group health and we've gotten no answers from group health. Thank you. There is a motion to uh, discharge. The, the, the motion to discharge, right? Motion to, Please call to discharge group health. Please call, oh, oh I can just call a voice. Mm -hmm. Somebody's buzzing. Somebody wants to talk on a motion to discharge yet? Alderman Kittleson. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I, I'm just, does that mean we're voting on both of these issues? No, we're just, just it's, it's a prerequisite to acting on 1741 and 42. Thank you. Thank you. Rules of order. Alderman Rehassel. Thank you, Your Honor. It's always, a, to me, it's serious to pull something out of committee. Um, is there a member of the committee that would like to speak to this? Obviously, there must have been an obstacle, or what was the exact... I heard some explanations, but I'm still not clear exactly why we're pulling it from that committee, why they weren't, why they haven't made a decision. Is there someone Alderman, who can speak Alderman, to that? I believe Alderman Montemayor did that. Alderman Montemayor, you did that. Thank you. We went at group health, and there was lots of discussion and lots of discussion. 
But another little piece of information is that half of the committee members are union representatives, so it isn't even appropriate that they would be giving a recommendation for their own uh, amounts that they should be spending. Alderman Sark. Thank you, and I'm, I'm chairman of the Group Health Insurance Committee, and uh, actually did meet twice to discuss the, the, the rates, premium rates. And discussion more was why were they so high as opposed to how we got there. And it was kind of agreed that, okay, we understand that we, we do have an issue. We're going from a, a $7 million bill for insurance to a $9 million bill, but it's going to have to be paid. So basically the feeling of the committee was, let's get on with approving it because we're into 09 already, but we still want to have, that's why we brought the other resolution in to, to examine the cost factors within our insurance, why they are going up so high, and to perhaps find some solutions to that. Thank you. <laughs> On the uh, notice to uh, Mr. President Barn. Thank you, Your Honor. I have a question. I have a question for Alderman Surik. Uh, hopefully, he can answer it, uh, or somebody else from the Insurance Committee. The uh, premium rates that we're setting for 2009 are the premiums going to cover our full possible exposure for employee health insurance, or are we going to have to dip into some reserves uh, that we have set aside and make the premium increases even more er erroneous next year. Oh, I'm sorry. Clarification. Thank, thank you, Your Honor. Well, what happened was uh, in 2008, we actually, uh, we did use our reserves. And it's, uh, when I was involved with the insurance, we tried to maintain a 1 point to 1.2 million reserve in case it was a bad year. And those reserves were extinguished. So for 2009, we don't want to be left, left barren without having reserves. So that's why the premiums are going up so high to reestablish its reserve in case we, again, experience a bad year. Thank you. Okay, on just simply the motion to discharge. We're not acting on the uh, resolutions yet. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, now we go to 1741, resolution number 169-0809 by Alderman Hanna, establishing the monthly premium equivalent rates for the dental insurance plan effective January 2009 coverage. President Hanna, I need a motion. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Clayunas. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Surik. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Verhassel. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. And Kittleson. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1642, resolution number 1540809 by Alderman Hanna, establishing the monthly premium equivalent rates for the medical benefit plan effective for January 2009 coverage. President Hanna, in motion. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Surik. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Verhasselt. Aye. Born, Aye. Bauk, Aye. Decker, Aye. Gisha, Aye. Hannah, Aye. Heidemann, Aye. Kittleson, Ann Clyunas. 14 ayes, 1 abstention. Motion carries. 1927, an ordinance by Alderman Montemayor, Sarek, Meyer, Decker, and Verhasselt amended Section 29-75 of the 1975 Sheboygan Municipal Code so as to eliminate Section 3-7 under B, Department of Public Works, and recreate Section 2-7 under B, Depart Department of Public Works, and the, and the Department of Public Works Table of Organization, and create job descriptions for janitor, vehicle and equipment manager, building and grounds manager, and traffic superintendent. Alderman Montemayor. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I'm, I move that the ordinance be put upon its passage. We need a... System. That generally, it's a, it's a change in the TO that uh, generally would lie over. It, it will lie over now. The only way to act on it is to ask for suspension. I ask for suspension. Is there a second to that or any objection to that? We need, Just, we need a second. There's objection. Then the matter will lie over. Other matters out there? Other, on bulk. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I'd like to, uh, like to suggest that this document, a lot of my colleagues here have, have tried to get more information on this particular uh, uh, ordinance. And the minutes from the Salary and Grievance Committee of December 12th or 18th, whatever that date was, have not been made public yet. 
this is a surprise to a lot of people. We don't know a lot about it. So I'm wondering if a committee of the whole meeting might be appropriate uh, between now and then for us to, uh, to, uh, to hold. So I would move that this document be referred to the committee of the whole, that the committee of the whole, we would include it in our meeting, which is next Monday night. Uh, and I'd ask that Director Bittner and Chairperson Meyer be available that night and that the Salary and Grievance Committee meetings uh, minutes be published before that night. Uh, so that, and Alderman, if you have questions, uh, please get them out there so that Director Bittner and Chairman, uh, Chairperson Meyer can be there to uh, get us as much information as we can about this because this has a lot of people concerned. I'm sure there are great explanations. We just don't know what those explanations are. Second. Second. Motion and second to refer to uh, Committee of the Whole under discussion. Just so it, Alderman Rahassel. Your Honor, I'd also like to ask that this be sent to the uh, Committee of Public Works, seeing this is directly a public works related issue, that it be sent to that committee for further in-depth discussion at the committee level. That needs to be included in your, in your, do you want to include that in your motion? You're going to have multiple referrals. Thank you, Your Honor. I would ask uh, all the person for hassle if it would be okay if a potential outcome of that committee of the whole meeting would be we would refer it to public works after we get, get our kick at it, if it should go to them, if we feel that way that night. Yeah, and that, I would be fine with that, Your Honor. I, I just think uh, just from a matter of uh, pure respect out of the standing five standing committees that something as important and specific as public works go to the public works committee. Mm -hmm. But I, I can live with Alderman Balk's suggestion. Thank you. And I would suggest that we have that meeting. I'll word it on the agenda to meet. There's a finance committee meeting. I'll word the agenda to meet at 6.30 or immediately following the finance committee meeting. So it's kind of, I think it's a light finance agenda. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, this actually is in our committee at this point. Um, we did not have a quorum at our last meeting, which we would have been discussing this. So it is actually in the committee. This doesn't need to be sent in, to us. In public works. In public works, yes. And just, just a reminder, I know that some aldermen are, are not able to make the committee meetings, but if you need information, by all means, you're all welcome to attend the committee meetings and engage, uh, ask questions there. Uh, sometimes it's, it's best that you attend the meetings if you're able to. Further discussion, Alderman Rehassel? Thank you, Your Honor. Can I, Madam Chair of the Public Works Committee, then will it be on this Thursday's committee agenda? Alderman Meyer. Your Honor, yes, thank you. Um, it will be on the agenda for this week again. Thank you. On the motion to refer to the Committee of the Whole 1927. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Other matters, Attorney McLean? <clears throat> 1928 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2009 and June 30, 2010. That goes to law and licensing. 1925 is a communication from Alder Person Boren along with an article from the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Limiting property tax will be no, that should be easy, I believe, feet. <laughs> that goes to Finance Committee, the whole, and how many other committees do you want it to go? No, just kidding. Yeah, just kidding. I know, I know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Finance and Committee, the whole. Continue. 1930 is a communication from Alder Person Born along with an article from the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Midwest states may work together to buy road salt. It goes to Public Works. 1931 is an RO by the Deputy Finance Director Treasurer submitting the Municipal Court Monthly Finance re Report as submitted to the State Treasurer and a statement of Municipal Court revenues and expenditures as of November 30, 2008 and the statement of fines and fees collected in November 2008 by the Sheboygan County Clerk of Courts. It will be referred to Finance and Joint Municipal Court. 1932 is an ordinance repealing substitute of General Ordinance Number 10708, which granted an encroachment to Richard A. Wilkins, his heirs and assigns upon described portions of North 13th Street and Michigan Avenue in the city for the purpose of maintaining a patio area. That lies over. Need a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Then adjourn.